Hello and welcome to this introduction to Awake with 5. I'm Arno and I'm Peter. Welcome. Hi. Now before jumping into uh, the scope of Awake with 5, let's have a look at the, uh, uh, the events of the past year and actually the evolutions of Awake over the past uh, 15 months. And obviously everything started with Awake with 3.0 which was still released in, uh, uh, in 2015 with a brand new user experience and, and uh, introducing the Polygon approach. But last year we took some, uh, some major steps into enhancing the Product. Uh, it started with a Windows 3.1 to make the product multi-tenant and the service provider ready. Uh, from there, extending the, uh, uh, the integration capabilities with software as a service and uh, making specifically having a single sign-on set up to a, uh, a wide range of uh, SaaS services. Uh, with 3.3, with a Windows 3.3, we've added a lot of customization uh, uh, capabilities as well as enhanced the security capabilities through a wider range of multi-factor authentication. Then to land end of 2016 with an integration of OneDrive uh, and uh, a whole range of user experience enhancements. Because at the end of the day, the user is at the core of what, uh, what a Wing was about and as user experience is really central to everything that we do. Which brings us to today, uh, the, uh, the official launch of Wing 3.5. And uh, let's, let's have a look at what the main functionalities are. And it's a quite, uh, a, a quite full slide of, uh, of different features, and actually the release has more than, than this. It's a quite, uh, a quite extensive list of enhancements that we're bringing in Wing 3.5. But let's group through the, the main building blocks and the main items that we're adding. First of all, a whole load of, of new uh, features and functionalities to enhance the user experience further than, than what it is today. Secondly, very specifically for first-time users, we've been adding uh, uh, guided tour, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Uh, thirdly, administrators, be it you know, IT managers or our IT partners, uh, a whole lot of tools to make their life easier than what it is even today. And then finally, uh, extending the usage auditing capabilities of the platform. We already had a lot of uh, capabilities there. We continue to extend in this track uh, because we firmly believe that a wing can be a great solution for businesses to uh, step into enhanced compliance. Uh, be it uh, IT compliance, be it GDPR, etc., uh, a wing can be a great tool there. Now, let, let's pick up on the first building block and let's zoom into the uh, user experience enhancements. Um, first thing that we've added there is function keys, more specifically function keys that will be enabled on touch devices. As you know, if you're working on a iPad, for example, you don't have the notion of function keys yet, but a lot of our legacy applications rely on those function keys to work efficiently. So Peter is going to show it in a minute, but we have added the capabilities to uh, add function keys on an app or app basis so that you can actually use it to the full extent on touch devices such as an iPad or other devices. Secondly is a connection quality viewer because obviously a Wingo is a 100% online solution. Uh, so you as an end user should have an idea if your bandwidth is causing an issue uh, for, uh, for the Awingu experience. And so this is built in by default now as well. Uh, then uh, thirdly, we've uh, fully revisited the file section of Awingu. Uh, core focus there was to make the navigation and the handling more efficient. Uh, and Peter is going to show yeah, less uh, clicks. Exactly, less clicks. And it's, it's a lot more convenient the way we've set up now. Uh, finally, there we've added 12 new languages and uh, the, uh, the related keyboard packs, and this specifically for Nordic languages and uh, Central European uh, languages. So a whole lot of new languages added to the, uh, the languages that were already uh, supported. So we already had the, uh, uh, Europe, the, the, the other European languages, uh, German, English, Dutch, French, uh, etc. Second big building block is the first time use, where we uh, invested in a guided tour mechanism to really help first time users in their adoption of what is a new tool to them and a new user experience and a new way of working. Third big building block, enhancing the experience for the administrators, the people that manage the platform and that do the setup, etc. Uh, long list of, uh, of features that we've added there. Uh, namely, some of them are uh, facilitating the provisioning of remote desktop uh, uh, environments, enabling offline uh, installations, uh, which is uh, sometimes required for bigger installations or for high security environments. Um, specifically for service providers, the capability to cap number of users per tenant, which is obviously very interesting. Uh, 
Um, and finally, multi certificates uh, deployments are also uh, enabled, also for more complex environments, more enterprise grade or service provider grade uh, environments typically. Finally, uh, usage auditing, and actually something which is really, really cool, I believe. Um, we've enabled usage anomaly detection in, uh, in, in this release of Omegnus, and basically what we're doing is we've predefined a set of rules based on, uh, on who you are as a user, on where you are working with Omegnus, being the IP address, what the browser fingerprint is, which is a very good proxy on you know, uniqueness of your uh, of your device, and when you're using a window. And based on the mix of those characteristics, we're going to measure uh, anomalies versus normal behavior. Um, and these anomalies are being displayed in the window dashboard and can be uh, managed through the uh, through the SMC. The reason why this is really cool as a feature is that it really helps businesses. Uh, increase their level of uh, IT security and increase the level of, uh, of compliance as well and helps them move into uh, more regulated environments or, or, or help them uh, adopt or, or become GDPR compliant. Mm -hmm. The final thing um, is a small thing but I think is a pretty useful <laughs> thing is the ability to, uh, to export audit logs from a wing immediately without having to work through uh, uh, secondary tools. So this is very convenient as well. Now enough me, uh, me talking about through the different features, I think it's time to actually show the different things and uh, Peter is going to catch up on, uh, on a lot of the new features that we've added. Okay, thanks Hello. So first of all, I will show how the guided tours are implemented within our products. So once you're logged on, you will see as a new user, you get this pop-up which welcomes you to a Wingo, and which gives you an explanation on how to use the product. So you can go through different screens where it would explain different parts of the workspace and once you've got it you just press ok I got it and the tutorial goes away. So this part is done throughout the whole product so you have this for the workspace but we have done this for the files and applications as well. So as soon as I browse to the files section you'll see it's the first time that I access the file so I get the um, guided tour as well which helps me to say like how you select the file, upload the file etc. I will not go through the details of the tour right now, but it helps people onboarding easier. Now, since I'm on the files page, let me show you how we actually uh, refactor the files interface. So as you can see, the, um, the breadcrumb is on top right now, and the menu is actually exposed directly on the main screen. So this allows to do actions without having to do multiple clicks. Another big improvement is actually if you see if I um, hover around a uh, object, you can see that there is the, the circle here and I can directly select the file. So I get again uh, some information on how this works. So we've tried to make things very easy for new users. So as you can see, I can select multiple files at once and I can do operations on them. So this allows you to work a lot faster on the files interface actually. So another thing I wanted to show is actually the anomaly detection, which uh, I know already mentioned. Very exciting. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'll go to applications where I get another tour, of course, and I'll go to the dashboard. And in the dashboard, you can see that there is a new section which is called anomalies. And right here, you will see that there are already some locked items. Um, for example, you can see that um, I logged on with a new browser with a certain fingerprint. So if I would log on with a different device, I would get an entry here stating like, okay, be aware that you're using a new device, it might be very informational. But what you can see as well is actually travel speed, for example. So what happens with travel speed is we, we compare where you logged on the last time and the next time. And if these two points are too far away and it's impossible to do the actually travel within that amount of time, we will give an event as well like this is abnormal. The same goes for country mismatch. If you have an active session in, in two countries at the same time, that's impossible. So this helps everyone to truly understand how secure the system is and to, to detect if things are going wrong. We have another one which is actually the too many failed events. So we do have measures against brute force, but now we will lock them as well so you know that your account was being brute forced. So the next thing I want to show are actually the function keys, which are especially convenient on mobile devices since they don't have function keys, but you can add actually any key combination you want. Yeah, and, it, and this is particularly interesting for, you know, if you're using Dynamics or other ERP packages, etc. A lot of those tools depend on function keys. Absolutely. So within the SMC, I will add function keys to the above 50 uh, package. 
So we'll add a key, for example, to open a file, which is Control plus O, I just added. Start the application. And as you can see on the right top, there is the open button. So let me first log on to the application. And on any device, you can just press open and it will execute the Control O combination. So as you, can, as you saw in the SMC, you can do that for any key combination you want. Another cool thing which we added, which I already mentioned, is actually the quality viewer. So you see here at the bottom that my quality is excellent. So you see I have a really low uh, round trip of 16 milliseconds. And as soon as this gets higher, the quality will be lower, lower, lower. And once it's the quality becomes not good enough, we will actually show a blue bar on the screen stating that user experience is impacted. So this helps a lot if you feel like things are going sluggish, then you know where, where to look for that. It means that the quality is not sufficient to, to run the Owingo solution. There, uh, that concludes the uh, update of Owingo uh, 3.5. I hope you found this uh, very interesting and instrumental. And uh, if you look for more information, you can always find it at www.owingo.com.